Hey everyone, welcome to my channel and another video on Flutter programming. In this video, I want to introduce you to a complete email authentication project in Flutter. In this project, I've implemented all the page related to email authentication, such as sign up, login, password recovery, and one-time password verification page. And I'm going to show you this page. This project not only has a fully designed set of authentication page, but also includes all the logic for authentication, such as validations and server communication classes. It's a complete project that you can use in your future projects. All you need to do is connect it to your backend APIs, make minor adjustments to align with uh, those APIs and you are good to go. Finally, I should mention that this project supports multiple languages and both dark and light themes. Alright, let's dive in and show you what the project looks like and walk you through it. As you can see in the simulator, this is the first page of the project which is the starting a point for the authentication process and the term and conditions of the project are displayed at the bottom. The next page I want to show you uh, is the login page. It consists of two fields email and password and as you can see uh, the validation logic for these fields is already implemented. And the next page I'd like to introduce is the account creation or the sign up page. As you can see in the video, the fields for this page along with their validation logic are fully implemented. Uh, you can use this page as is and if your regist registration API requires additional fields, uh, you can easily add them to this page. All right, the next page I want to show you is the password recovery page. This page has an email field for users who have forgotten their password. After entering their email, users are redirected to the OTP verification page, the design of which can be seen here. This page has a field for entering the one-time password and at the bottom, there's a timer for resending the OTP. You can adjust this timer based on your project's needs. Finally, as you can see in the video, after this page, users are taken to a create new password page where they can set a new password. Now let's talk about the profile page. As you can see, I've implemented a profile page that you can expand as needed by adding more items. This page includes an option to edit the profile where users can update their profile picture and enter details uh, like their name, uh, date of birth, gender, etc. And another feature I want to highlight is the language switcher, which allows users to change the app's language. You can add uh, any other language you need. There's also a theme switcher, which lets users toggle between dark and light modes. All right, now let's talk about the project source code. Uh, the first folder I want to discuss is the assets folder, which contains the projects, icons, and images. As you can see, this folder is referenced in the PubSpec YAML file and access 
to this image is managed by uh, using the flutter gem package i've configured this package here and all other required packages are also listed in this section I've used the DIO package for server communication, block for state management, get it uh, for dependency injection, and go router for uh, routing. And other packages are included as needed. Now let's talk about the project source structure. Uh, the source is organized into a core folder and a feature folder along with uh, three standalone files. The first file is main dart, which is the project's entry point. Here I've set up configurations for get it, multilingual support and other global settings. Inside Run app, I've provided uh, the global blocks for bottom navigation, themes, uh, authentication, and profile. And finally, the app class contains the app's initial settings, material app router, and theme configurations. Let's talk about these folders. The core folder contains the application's core files, such as those for uh, Flutter Gen, localization, locators, and other resources you see in the video. These folders also include API routes, which you can modify to match your project's backend routes. Additionally, it holds the internal page routes. Next is the theme files, uh, which defines the project's color, dimensions, light and dark themes, and typography. I've used the Jaldi font here, along with other fonts as needed. and the use cases and utilities files uh, are also here And finally, there are custom widgets and other usable components you might need for your project. Now let's talk about the features folder. It includes two subfolders, authentication and home. The main focus of this project is the authentication feature which is divided into data, domain, and presentation layer. The data layer handles server communication and model classes, uh, which you can modify based on your API requirements. The repositories are implemented here but they uh, can be adjusted to fit your backend APIs.
and use cases that interact with their repositories are also here. And finally, the presentation layer contains projects, state management files, authentication screens, and the widgets. You can review and reuse these codes. And finally, let's talk about the screens folder. All the screens are implemented in this section and as you can see each page has its own file with a clear name the ui for each screen is here along with any custom widgets used in uh, designing this page Thank you for watching and if this video was helpful to you, please subscribe to my channel and like and share the video and hit the bell icon to get notifications for future videos. I will see you again in the next video.